Hello everybody, how good of you to join. Welcome to Endzone A Wall Apart version 1.0. So the final release is upon us. The game is officially out of early access. And it's been an amazing year for this game. It's a beautiful city builder survival game. It's a mixture of Frostpunk and Banished, where you build up a post-apocalyptic village and you have to defend yourself against nature. And now with release 1.0, also against raiders. That's right, we're also going to see attacks on our village and we have to defend ourselves. Without further ado, I think it's time to start a new game, a brand new game starting our village from scratch. And of course, we're going to play the survival mode and of course, we're going to play it on the advanced difficulty. Next up, we would have the map settings. So here we can choose different parameters. So as we can see, there's lots of stuff we can actually change here. By the way, we could also do this in the difficulty settings where we have lots of stuff that we could change if we want to, for example, say how um, a strong droughts would be. In this case here, I think with the advanced difficulty, we have really uh, quite a lot of uh, droughts as well. And as well, rain and number of settlers. We're starting with medium, everything at medium, I think. And other than that, raiders are, of course, enabled so we can see them and also side missions are on they're also revamped and new stuff is coming in and i think with this one yeah let's get cracking and by the way before i forget it please if you want to purchase this game support the channel and click the link below with the affiliated link you can purchase the game at a special discount and also support the channel but let's get now started like a good place to settle. You know what we learned in the end zone? Basic needs come first and foremost. We have to build up a water and food supply and then Alrighty, and here we are, a new beginning, so we're getting a nice little starting quest right from start. And this is it, this is our beautiful location where we are now in New Heaven, as our, well, village is called, or whatever you might call it at the moment. And as we can see, well, we have a mountainside to the south, which is, well, rather good because it's a natural defense. We got some one, two, three, and four lakes close by, which is good for some water supply later down the road a few forests here and there a few scraps as we can see and some really cool ruins there as well like this train station and yes well at the moment weather forecast predicts that we have some rainy days and some non-rainy days but no catastrophe on the horizon yet and yeah we have to defend ourselves against well nature and with the full release not only against nature itself anymore but well also against raiders and attackers let's get started i'm going to build it in pause mode this game is really really difficult at the beginning so i need to to do this very carefully of, of what we are planning out here so i'm going to, to plan a few streets there and also here in the center perhaps a um, main road like this that we can then have a lot of some main roads as you know from my other let's plays and in that case there we can have another main road then and there is a smaller road going up there we shouldn't waste too much with the build or the road building though since yeah it's rather time consuming the first thing that i would need to have let's have a look at our resources and as we can see water and food is really low or the first things that we need to do here and a well would be my first target and let's have the well right behind our bus here the well is going to cost me oh we need to be careful there are 30 scraps we have 170 scraps not a lot we are going to need two of these wells in the beginning and i'm probably going to build one more a bit further over there along the main road that we have there right so two wells we need early on the other thing that we do need early on is a gatherer hut so something where we do get some food out and we could have this one yeah a bit more to the north up here oh and what we can see there's some radiation so this is another point of the game we have radiation levels and they are increasing and decreasing over time and there we have a little radiation zone so i'm not going to build i'm not going to build this building there in the radiated zone so let's just see down here it's it's looking a bit better even though it's far away ah this one is good this is rather close and it's also close to the, the road system that we have there right let's just see that we can get this one up all the way to that side perfect that's that now let's just see we can pause the game actually because they have quite some stuff to do and we have 10 settlers and well a few of them should be builders now let's assign four to the builders in fact i could make it five and the other five settlers well they're not going to stand around they're going to gather some stuff for us we do have some trees up there 
and I can also say, for example, I want to gather some wood and I want to gather some scrap and we do need those things, right? Let's get down here. There we have some forests. We could chop them down. So I'm going to say chop it down here and we also have some scraps here. Not a lot. Ah, it's really not a lot. 45 scraps only. There we have 160. Hmm. There's not more anywhere, right? Nope, I don't think so. So let's say those. Yeah, let's have those 150. It's really far away though from my village. So this might be a problem. The first well is coming up. We do have the resources after all. And look at that, that we have, for example, Adam. I just absolutely love that every single one of these citizens is simulated. So they all have their name, education, background story. They all have their goals, of course. They want to create a family. Um, and we need to provide for that. And Adam, he's also, as we can see, wearing anti-radiation suit as are most people here doing so this is another thing and we do have the radiation levels are rising at some point and we do need to have some protection for that and the better protected they are the less likely it is they fall sick and the i think the mask they're wearing is the highest protection and we start with a few of them in the beginning oh there's also some game here this is looking good. And the second well is up and running. And we should definitely get the first two well keepers up for that. For our first production of water. And as we can see, it is working at 100% efficiency for now. We cannot overlap them too much. If we do that, then they would be reduced in their efficiency. Now, the gatherer. The next thing, since we have the boars rather close, this is a good hunting area then. I can see that. But for now, that should be fine. And the other settlers that are uh, available now and have no jobs, well, they're basically going down here and gathering what I told them to. And as we can see, they're doing it, getting the first wood back home there. From these forests there, beautiful, fantastic. And yes, we are still on day one. The radiation is creeping a bit closer there, I think. I hope it's not coming too close, <laughs> otherwise we're getting the first radiation sicknesses already, even though it's only light area. As we can see, there is also some orange area right now. So if my citizens would be in this area, they would become sick rather quickly. So I'm just hoping that for now we should be safe. The hunting cabin is built as well, or the gatherer, sorry, the gatherer cabin. And we're still collecting some scrap and some wood. And while we do that, we need to prepare the next thing right away. So for food, one gatherer, of course, is not going to do it. We do need something else. And the hunter is a good idea. We also have the fisherman, but the fisherman, uh, it's a bit far away. I think I would rather have something close by. And as we can see, there is some game in these woods. So having a hunter and gatherer, hunter and gatherer in this area might make a lot of sense. And boom, there we have the next one, the hunting lodge. So both of them can now start then producing some food for us. Very, very good. Now let's just continue. Another thing is that we are collecting scraps right now, but with that scrap, we cannot do that much yet. It's only for the basic production of buildings, right? But we want to refine them. We want to pr uh, process them into more refined stuff, like, for example, clothing, metal, and plastic. And for that, we do have the recycler. So with the recycler, that's basically another person who is getting the scrap, and he is, well, getting some stuff out of it that we can use then for some further processing. Now, let's just see where I would like to have my recycler. And just a little bit later, very good. Hunter and gatherer's cabin are working now and people are going to and fro and <laughs> also getting quite a lot of meat like this one here back home. And there's a gatherer who's getting a basket full of, I guess, herbs and whatnot um, back home there as well and berries. Because what we can see is there's lots of bushes in its surroundings. For the food, um, for the hunter, oh yeah, we probably will be hunting down every single one of these animals and then probably don't have anything anymore left but who knows about that at the moment it's going down but hopefully they grow again now one thing that we don't have yet is housing my people would like to live in some houses even though it's just some smaller houses there and i should provide so let's just get us a few houses up there like this tiny block there and yep let's have the first three of them each one of them costs me eight wood and 15 scrap oh with the scraps we're going to be facing a shortage soon then i don't have any available people then so i've got five builders let's actually reduce this to two settlers and two of them are now going to fulfill the task that we have down here especially for the 
the scraps and the other one for the wood because I do need more resources. And in those houses it is where they also, you know, scootly poop that is reproducing. So that means they can, well, create babies. And that's exactly what we need as well because we want to grow. There we got the first house coming up. It's a basic house really, but it's looking fine. And as we can see, five people can move in there and already three children are moving in as well. The same goes with this one. And yeah, we only have 11 adults, so I think... Yeah, three houses should be fine, right? Because five for each, but it's a family. So this one here, I think, is still what is needing a house, and then we should be fine. It's also raining, and with the rain, what is also changing is the radiation around us. So if it's radiated rain, of course, we get more radiation. As we can see, some of them are going away. This one is getting smaller here right now. This one is rather stable for now. Ah, very close, though. I would love a good rain to wash it all away. There we got the houses. Very good. So people are moving in there, now starting their life. They also have their own inventory and getting some resources to and fro. These houses look cute. Well, basically built with what we have in our surroundings, I guess. Very good. The water supply is dropping. I hope that those two wells are fine, but it looks like... Now, the water tank is full. So it should be fine for now. Food, I think those two are fine too. So that means we can basically focus on some other stuff. I'm going to reduce the amount of uh, builders for now. I want to amass a bit more scraps now. This one here is doing the job for it. And we have 130 scraps still left. We still have another planning ahead of us. And that is, where do we want to have our industrial zone at some point? Where do we have our food production? Where do we have our citizens? Now, there is quite a lot of buildings you can build in this game. Right? Most of them haven't even been researched yet. So there's also some tech tree then later down the road where we can unlock more buildings. And I would like to plan ahead so that we say, like for example, this is the inner city core of what we might have then. And down here we have the industrial zone, right? It's looking rather dirty here anyway, or dry, or rather polluted air. I don't know. So having a bit of industry down here should be a total catastrophe. Plus, we can also defend ourselves towards the south then. And towards the north, I guess. Right? For any incoming attacks that might appear. Oh, we still have six homeless people. I should probably not talk so much. I should probably just continue building. Let's have another house. There we have it. And, yep, up here we can have then more houses. So this one we can build. And down here, since we have everything, I would like to continue with my, my dirt road. Going all the way down here. To this area and on that side we do have then our first industrial building which would be a scrapyard so the scrap route here is collecting all the scrap basically in the surrounding not only that what we can collect with bare hands but it's also got some machines for it and it makes it a lot easier to get some scraps going and we do need to have a bigger supply of scraps coming in this one the other one would be a forester lodge and that is something we can do more or less over here, where we do have our trees. We can, of course, then also say, please replant those trees. Let's get rid of this flag there. And instead of that, just have the forester lodge. Mm, yeah. Let's have it here. Right, so that we still have a bit of room there for the road to grow. This one, what we also definitely will need here is something where we can store stuff. Because those people definitely shouldn't have to go all the way up here to our main center right now. To our bus rack, where we basically store most of the stuff. I do want to have something down here where we can store it. A warehouse would be good, but it is not unlocked yet. So what I can do is a temporary store room. A temporary store room stores different resources. This building cannot be used in a house um, or to house water. So there we can have it. And this one is basically then just storing all the goods that we produce in this area, right? And someone can then carry it up there. Probably we could probably, yep, employ someone in there. I have no idea, but this might be possible. Let's have the, just see the road. Oh, there we actually have it. This is my main road. And this one we can remove again. Right? So that we have the main road still. Where we start them with the industrial zone. So I can continue building here something. And don't have to demolish buildings all the time. 
Um, Scrap-wise, not that much. We do have a few builders available. Let's make it three settlers and three builders. So the three settlers, yeah, would we have plenty of, so I don't need to do anything here. For the scraps, though, I will definitely need to collect a few more scraps. So there we got a few more buildings now coming up. Yes, and as you can see, they have to walk huge distances there to get up there. But it's, well, it's like with this difficulty that the major resources are rather far away from your town center. Ah, very good. Another house. There it is. We still got four homeless people. How is this possible? There's three people living in here. Five, seven, nine, eleven. Oh. Oh, yes. It might actually be right. So we still need one more cabin for now. I mean, there are, you know, there's going to be so many babies soon. It's never enough anyway. But let's just, let's just have it for my starter family. And let's also finish this road then here. And as we can see, they're starting rather quickly with that. Oh, and we're officially out of scraps. So hopefully they're gathering more. Let's actually get even more people to gather scraps for us for now. We are out of it. Um, what I can see is, yep, also the first drought is happening soon. That means no water anymore. Ah, very good. And there we have the scrapyard also finished a majestic building. <laughs> and in here now we can assign scrap collectors. So I no longer need this gather scrap um, task that we have there. Can go away. And basically whoever is now employed in the scrap collector can work on that. We also got a few more settlers now coming in. So a few more children turned adult. That is fine for us. Um, I would still need another, or uh, will still need another cabin. We do have the resources. So we got a few more scraps coming in. Fine. Let's build the next house. I think they're also going to focus now on these things here. The storeroom would be really important in this area because these walking distances are killing me right now. It's taking too much time. There we have the forest lodge. A bit of scraps is still missing. And yeah, the scrapyard is working now as well as we can see. So now we can work on these scrap piles here. And each one of them can only be salvaged by a scrapyard, right? So that's what we need for. It has a huge radius. So we have around 600 scrap from now on. And that's a pretty good thing. We can then, of course, you know, change the field of work later. It once this one is depleted to, for example, go down here to all these ruins there. And yes, we can also see some expedition targets here already so later we can um, scout ahead into these buildings and see what we can find there some dangers some loot or some mysteries to be unlocked uh, it's raining again let's just see drought is coming closer how's it looking with my radiation it's fine actually as we can see all righty the forest lodge is finished now too so really just the storeroom is missing i think those guys are delivering it already ah very good and the storeroom is coming up. And we're also getting a few more people coming in. So they're being born, of course. Looking good. And there we have it. The storeroom is finished. So from now on, people can walk to this one here right away and save a lot of time traveling. And this is also the beginning of our little industrial zone that we need to quickly lay out. So there we have the evil g the, this one here sorry this one the evil path i wanted to say but in that case the problem is yeah there's the forest the lodge so we might make a little plaza there with lots of roads and then we can have the industry here now let's just see what we can do we do need a recycler the recycle is the first building in that case because with this one we can process the scrap into for example clothing and metal what we want to do right so let's have the first one the recycler right here behind the storeroom where we can start with that it seems like it's a bit of a distance there still right but it should be fine i mean here we have the resources i can't change that so there we have all the resources that we need and the forests and stuff so i think it's a good thing now food is really good i don't think we need so many people working in food actually there are not even that many people working in food strange well anyway we're producing enough and we have some more homeless people again that is because yep we'll basically we have grown and i will yep let's get another cabin there it's 
actually keep a bit of a, a room there between them and three more of those cabins we can build and let's have the dirt roads then as well this one and here we can continue we might actually make this a three tile road who knows about that really now 15 and 5 and 3 settlers are available, 3 more are working there and the refiner as we can see has opened up now as well. And as we can see also the first scrap is being stored in the storeroom already so it's coming right from here the scrapyard and those people are going right to my storeroom and delivering it. Right now we still don't have a path in here so they're just going to go over the dirt. But this is speeding up things dramatically. And the first lodge, this is where we also do need the first people working in it so that we get a steady supply of wood coming in. I'm not too happy about my water. For the water, I will probably need, hmm, let's see, probably need something to store the water. Like a water tower. Oh, that's requiring a lot. I don't have anything else yet. The water tower, a big building but we cannot afford that yet so i think it's all about those two 600 is our limit a third well might do wonders let's actually have a third well right here beside the storeroom ah, and very good the rain is washing away all the radiation that we have in our surroundings also the streets are being built because we have a couple of builders available to us and the next well has been built so let's assign a well keeper to that and there we have the recycler now i'm going to choose metal for now because what we want to have with the metal is tools and the tools are running out now soon we only have 10 tools left and without tools productivity is going down dramatically so getting someone up there is important and it's going to be a refiner there we have it and the recycler it is and he's producing now metal for us. Ah, beautiful, really, in all its gloomy and darkness. Still a beautiful game. I like the lighting. And yes, also the first drought is incoming, so not too long anymore. And then all the lakes are going to run dry and there's no more rain coming. And yeah, we hopefully have enough water. So I think the wells will continue with the water production during the droughts. So it shouldn't be the biggest of problems. Everything else is working fine. What I can see though is the hunting lodge has run out of game. So what we can do is we can change the work area. Yeah, up there, there's actually some boars running around in the forest and we can assign that so that's a bit of meat there still even though food supply is none of our problem right now tool it is and also radiation protection has officially run out and we're also out of any medication so those things we need to work on now otherwise well it's going to get tough i tell you that stay tuned <laughs> 